If you are looking for a forged set of irons, which are super duper looking, super duper feeling, then boy, do I have the super duper video for you. In this video, you're gonna find some of the very best irons that you can buy for your money that will literally make your mouth water. In fact, if that does happen over a set of clubs, you should probably consult your doctor. I've got two fantastic sets to show you, but then the third one, which is probably my best recommendation, there's a little bit of a curveball. If you do like these videos, then make sure you wall up that subscribe button and also like this video or you will be struck down by thins and tops for the next two weeks and 12 days. So first up, without any hint of nepotism, we have the Titleist T100S. I've been really lucky over the last few years to have irons, which I've always wanted. So I always wanted a set of Mizuno blades, tick that off the list, and I always wanted a set of Titleist irons ever since I was a kid. And I got fitted for these at the Titleist Fitting Center at Woven last year. An incredible experience. And these are an interesting combination of a soft feeling, but fast flying golf club. As in, not when I hit it bad, I chuck it, as in the golf ball. And I have absolutely no hesitation recommending these irons. I've gone for the S version, which is a slightly stronger loft, but also a higher launching golf club. I know, get your head around that, but of course they are forged. Forged irons are made out of a single lump of steel. That steel is then pressed, compressed, hammered, moved, shaped, shaved into a simple shape that the engineers desire. Because it's only a single bit of steel, this gives limitations to design. It's also why these irons are some of the most expensive because the process of working on just a single bit of steel is generally more expensive than adding little components manufactured at different times. But they are, of course, very shiny. Cast clubs involve a different process. That involves making a mold, pouring the molten metal into the mold to make that desired shape. Often cast clubs then have certain features added. Purists would say that a forged iron, a pure forged iron, feels better, feels softer than a cast. Although that is up for debate. Now the last process that manufacturers can use is actually a combination of both casting and forging. What you will find are a lot of companies are making a cast club head, but then forging the face in the belief that if a forged face gives really nice feel and casting gives more options as far as club head technology and shape, then that gives the best of both worlds. And my pick for the best forged iron really does bring these two things together. Second up we have, well, damn, the Mizuno Pro 221, potentially the best looking blades on the market right now. And Mizuno know it, they really, really do. Mizuno with these irons have potentially made the pinnacle of forge clubs, but they know it. They really, really know it because there is hardly any difference at all between these and the MP20s. So I had a set of the MP20s and they were an absolutely amazing club. The only tangible difference on these irons is the fact they've put Mizuno Pro in a italic font and the stock 221 on the side. That's it. That's it. That's all you get. And I'll throw up a quote on screen here. This is from the head of R&D at Mizuno, David Llewellyn, who basically says they've done nothing to these new irons, but it just smacks at the fact they know that they have created something pretty close to perfection. So why? Like, why would you change it? Especially when you can hold it. Oh, oh, stop, stop drifting. I hope the mic picked out the sound of that. So behind the ball, they are a very compact muscle back slash blade design. If you do struggle with ball striking, these aren't gonna be the irons for you, especially on heel and toe strikes. But to just look at them, to just strike them, to just feel them, these are potentially some of the only irons which I would recommend getting head covers with. Yes, <gasps> I know, but you just don't want these getting dinked up. And I've got to be honest, I think that these would dink up very easily. It's like butter, it's like metal butter. So despite the Mizunos having the most arrogant iron launch in history, they are not my pick for the best forged iron. My pick is the I-525 from Ping. Now, before everybody lambasts me for choosing these over the Titleist, the Mizuno, and every other Forge club on the market, let me explain my positioning. 
So many years ago, I went to Pink HQ and they adamantly, point blank said, they were not gonna do any more forged clubs. They'd released the Ping Answer, which I think were absolutely fantastic irons, which unfortunately absolutely bombed. And after that point, they were pretty sure they weren't gonna bring another forge set out. But gradually, Ping decided to introduce into their makeup more forging processes. And we've already spoken about how you can have a cast head with a forged face which gives you the best of both worlds. So compared to a true forge blade, these aren't the same thing. So they've got this massive tungsten toe weight to give a little bit more forgiveness. The club head looks a little bit bigger behind the ball. They've not got a huge offset. I mean, I think these will be perfect from golfers mid handicap all the way down to single figures. And they feel great. They feel so good. So these irons do start to bring up a more general question as well. I mean, what is a forged iron? If you'd have asked me 10 years ago, a forged iron is a blade. There's no other way around that. But now so many companies are bringing out clubs like this ping that really do blur the lines because this is mostly a cast head. It only has the forged face and yet it feels like a forged club. If anybody came to me now and said, oh, what should I get if I want a forged club? I don't think my first recommendation would be a true blade because you really don't need one. The i525 has everything in it that you want from a forged club from a feel perspective. It also looks pretty good behind the ball, but it also offers that forgiveness. It's got the weight pushed to the perimeter of the club. When you strike it out of the toe, when you strike it out of the heel, it still feels nice. Certainly a lot nicer than if I struck the Mizuno out the heel or so. So get down into those comments and let us know if you had a pick of any Forge Club in the world, what would it be? Would you be going for a pure blade or would you want something which is gonna offer a little bit of both? And of course, get down into those comments below because obviously, the amount of forge clubs in the world I've left off, you know, Muras, I left off Callaways, for example. There are a lot of clubs out there that haven't made this very short list. I'm not entirely sure I've ever finished a video hitting this many shots before, but I really, really enjoy it. Make sure you absolutely wallop that like button. Let us know what you think about these pings. That was a terrible strike, but it's got a great, no. What a brilliant one to finish on. Poor strike, just fell a little bit short, but still ended up next to the pin. And guys, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you continue watching here, where we look at some of the best irons to come out of Japan. Be subscribers to the channel, and we'll see you down here next time.